immediate past president of Greater Nashville Realtors. And uh, we are so grateful and thankful to have a superstar in the house today. We have um, here to help walk us through the process of discovering how to use AI in your business is one of the biggest experts in real estate that I know of. And this is Marky Lemons Riley or Ryle that you guys all have probably seen speak before. She's here to talk to us today um, about using AI in your business. And we're going to talk today mostly about things in Canva, but this is kind of a preview for a class that she has coming up in August. We'll talk more about that later, but they're going to, in that class, we're going to talk about 13 different tools that you can use in AI. But for right now, I'm going to turn the floor over to Marky and let her get started talking about how to use Canva and AI in your business. Welcome to Greater Nashville Realtors live stream, Marky. You know what? I'm elated to be with Nashville today as a child. I'm going to take you back to 1977. My grandmother had a brand new Thunderbird and my uncle had relocated down to Nashville, actually Smyrna, because he attended Tennessee State University. So Every since 1977, I've had the opportunity to come to Nashville numerous times because I have several TSU graduates in my family. So what's going on this morning? I'm elated to come and speak with you today about artificial intelligence, chat GPT, and Canva, but Canva AI. Today, Canva has a minimum of 12 AI features inside of that one platform. What is alarming to me is that 1.6 billion people are leveraging AI in their businesses. However, only 14% of adult Americans are using a tool that they know that exists. As real estate professionals, we want to increase our return on investment, our return on time invested, and we want to create a brand worth selling. ChatGPT and AI allows us to do so in record-breaking time. And when I say record-breaking time, this is what I want you to think about. Yesterday, I had a interview uh, for Florida Realtors Magazine, and I told the young lady that in December of 2019, I had written 40,861 words because I use a tool called Grammarly. The week before last, that number was 107,040 words. So I wrote 67,000 more words in one week because of artificial intelligence. That means I'm on steroids. I'm Marky to the second power. But I went to go pull this up just to show this because this is what I sent yesterday to the writer just to provide her the proof from my Grammarly account about how my productivity has gone up. Think about writing articles. Think about blog posts. Think about property descriptions. Think about uh, video scripts. I mean, think about email communications and emails. I was in rare form because of artificial intelligence. That's awesome. Steve, are you using AI? I am. I am. I'm mostly using it. For, I'm use, mostly using it for writing. Now, I haven't really got into the design side in Canva, but then that's one of the reasons why I'm so interested today. But I use it. Um, to improve my writing. I think I'm a pretty good writer um, and I've trained Canva to write, or, or excuse me, ChatGBT to write like me by uploading some of my past writing in there. Ah, so excellent. What, well, so what the... I do is then I just take that and, and write on a topic and then I go and edit it. And so what I found out is that it's like having a writing assistant. So if you had, if like let's say if I, hired uh, an intern from college and said, hey, write a paper on um, how to buy a home with, with no money down. They could write that paper for me. Then I would just take it and edit it and add the, the finer points and some of the secrets that I have. And that's basically what I do. So it saves me a lot of time. I, I was surprised, 67,000 words. That's like a couple of books right there, extra that you wrote. <laughs> yes, in one, in, in, in one week. In one week, it's unreal. Well. Is. 
the one tool that I'm telling every realtor, I believe that they need to have in their arsenal and the tool that they need to pay for is going to be Canva. The reason is because Canva has at least 12, it's more through plugins or mm -hmm. and apps, uh, at least 12 AI tools. So what we're going to do is head on over here to Canva and see what's going on in the almighty world of Canva. Mm -hmm. I am an early adapter of Canva. Canva is now worth 26 billion dollars okay it's a tool that's been around about a decade every single week there is something new inside of canva so the very first thing i want to show you is their new doc tool doc when we come over to the doc tool the reason i'm starting with the doc tool is because i want to show you multiple things inside of this one document the first thing that I want to show you inside of this document is their Magic Write tool. Their Magic Write tool is using the API of OpenAI. OpenAI is the parent company or the platform for ChatGPT. So we went over to Docs. We're going to come and hit this plus sign, and I am going to go to Magic Write. Now, I'm going to ask it to give me seven things, right? So let's say that I want uh, seven tips to sell your home faster, okay? And we're going to just hit the enter button. And instantly, it has given me these seven tips. But what I will tell you, because I am a mid-aged woman, I can't see this, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. I definitely wear bifocals. And so we're going to highlight that. We're going to come over here to the text. We're going to change that font to something that is uh, more legible for us. And it provided me with seven tips. Now, what I would like to do at this point is definitely read the tips, okay? So we just created seven tips to sell your home faster. Selling a home can be a challenging uh can be a challenging and time consuming process, but there are ways to make it go faster. Here are seven tips to help you sell your home faster. Price it right, boost curb appeal, stage the interior, use high quality photos, market effectively, be flexible with showings and work with a real estate agent. Works for me, right? The reason I came into the Magic Doc tool is because I want to come up here to the top right-hand corner where it says convert. What I can now do is convert that document to a PowerPoint. So I like this one with the seven tips inside of the blue. I cr hit create my presentation in a separate browser. It pulled in my seven tools. How long did that take? A minute. A minute. So we have our seven tips still over here in a, a Word document because you can download it in a Word document. And we have a PowerPoint. I want you to think of this PowerPoint as carousel post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Each one can be a photo. I can actually save this as a PDF or even a website. That's AI inside of Canva. You like that magic? I do. Especially, Man. you know, the first thing that came to my mind was the carousel because those things are so popular because one of the things Instagram does is they show your first slide. And then later on, they'll, if, you, if you looked at it, they'll show it again, the second slide and the third slide of people. So it keeps popping up in there. It does. That's awesome. Now. Let's add some more magic to this. We're going to come over here and outside of people who speak English, what would be one of the fastest growing non-English speaking people in your state, do you think? Uh, Nashville has a huge Kurdish population. Spell that for me. You said Kurdish? K-U-R-D-I-S-H. K-U-R-D-I-S-H. Kurdish. Okay. So Hello. I'm... Large Latino. Latino, okay. So what we're going to now do is come over and we're looking for our translate tool. Canva has the ability to translate to 100 different languages, mm -hmm. okay? 
So I am going to come over here. It says automatically detect. We're going to come and see if Kurdish is a, is that the language? They, it is. Okay, so let's, I'm seeing it's two different Kurdish, right? I'm going to go with the first Kurdish. I am going to tell it to translate all nine of the slides. We're going to hit uh, done, translate. It's working its magic. And now what we're going to have is a English slide, a Kurdish slide, an English slide, a Kurdish slide, oh. right? So that's step three. We translate it. But that's now I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's come over here to resize. We can now resize this to the Instagram post size. Hit, we're going to just hit uh, copy and resize so that it'll pull it into a new browser. And we have our carousel post. Mm -hmm. Ready to go. Inside of Canva. How many minutes did that take us? Maybe three at this point, maybe. Three. So we wrote content that we can use on our website or in social media in one minute. We converted it to a PowerPoint. We then took that PowerPoint and turned it bilingual. We then took the bilingual and turned it into carousel post, which could also be carousels on LinkedIn as well. Every last one of these slides can be an individual post or photo. We could download it as a PDF guide. The possibilities just on that one tool, right, inside of Canva allows us to expand ourselves I, I don't even know times what, okay? But this, and, and this, we, we just getting started. But it's the ease of doing it. A lot of people are scared of artificial intelligence, but artificial intelligence is our ability to verbally or in writing convey instructions. You don't, you don't need to be a, a techie. You don't need to understand tech tools to be good at leveraging AI in your business. And if it's one thing that I think that we should pay for right now, it is Canva. Canva, I pay $119.40 per year. I use this tool a lot, but I'm falling in love with it more every single day because of artificial intelligence. And so you get the AI tools when you get the paid version of Canva? Well, technically, you can try the AI tools out for free. You get to try each of the AI tools 25 times before you have to pay for it. But if you want to not have any limitations, essentially, on what you're creating, then you want to have the paid version. And that's really not that expensive. No, it's not expensive at all. And here's another paid feature. So let's say that I wanted to come over here. I want to go back to my uploads and I want to infuse myself inside of this um, creation. I'm going to, I have some background removes, but we're going to use this example here. So let's say I want to put this picture inside of here. But I definitely don't want that background in there. When I click on the photo and we see the purple outline, I'm going to come over to remove background, to the background remover tool. This is another premium feature that is inside of Canva. For those who don't want to pay for this, you can use a tool, remove.bg. But it is the ease of having everything in one place essentially that we are paying for. So it's taking us time to remove that background. We're going to hit apply. And I'm going to slide my little picture up. And now I'm infused in that branding and marketing because of the remove background tool that is there. Uh, also inside of here, we're going to scroll up. There's a tool that I'm using now to create my digital human avatars. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, which this is a digital human avatar. Just wanted to show that to you. But let us come out for one second. And I am going to go and show you this DID2, DID Studio 2. Uh, you know what? I'm going to stop share for one second. Okay. And the reason I'm stopped sharing is because I did not turn the audio on because I want you to be able to hear and see this. Let's go to this video here. This is created with a app called Studio DID. And I created it inside of Canva because I wanted to have the branding, the lower one thirds, and uh, I wouldn't even call that a top one third, but let's go with a top one third. So this is what this is because you can do videos also inside of Canva. Don't miss Marky Lemon's Right House session. In the ever evolving real estate market, staying ahead of the curve is crucial to running a competitive and successful business. That's where the transformative power of AI comes into play. AI can enhance efficiency and productivity from predictive analytics and lead generation to streamlining transactions and enhancing the customer experience. Register now to watch this session live on Thursday, June 8th. This program is designed to provide valuable insights and equip realtors with the tools to leverage AI effectively. And here's the joy. Your members can watch that replay because it is available to all realtor members. And so when we come down here on the left-hand side, there are a lot of new apps that one can integrate into their Canva account. The app that I was already using, I'm integrating now, which is Studio DID, okay? I'm loving these tools because they allow me to differentiate myself in a crowded market. Can, um, can, well, does that have the ability to add your voice to it also? It does have a lot better. Yes, it does have the ability to add my voice. For me to add my voice, I use a third party tool called Descript okay. that I have trained on my voice likeness. So the way that that looks, this kind of the same way this looks, is you take your script. Okay. And I intentionally selected that voice um, because I wanted to show people variations. Sure. So I use the script if I wanted to have my voice likeness. Okay. And if we were to, let's see if we come here and add this one. And Descript is an AI video editing tool. Uh, Descript is a AI editing tool. And here is the platform, Descript.com. You can load uh, audio or video and train it on your voice likeness. I have a lot of videos with my voice likeness as well but you can also select other voices that they have in the system. Very cool. Yes, I, I'm loving it. <laughs> I use so, it just to get a transcript of some of my videos. The, if I want to get a transcript of what I've said for a video maybe I created for YouTube, I upload it to Descript and it gives me the whole transcript for it. Yes. I have to pay somebody to do that. But, it, but it's that's like the most basic thing it does. It's way more powerful than that. It is way more powerful than that. Let me see why it's not, it popped up and then it is making me sign in again so I can show you. So we're operating this on our computer. Now, let me show you a tool inside of this. Is, so this is what the script uh, looks like. You can have your voice likeness already in the system. You can use it for video editing. I love it for video editing. I actually don't like editing videos, but because of the script, I do like to edit the videos because it's not like you stopping and going and listening. You can actually have the transcript and you just copy and paste the words and the video comes with it. Another feature inside of Canva, we'll go and we'll open a new creation will go with a Facebook post. Okay, sounds good. Is going to be the actual text to image creation. Okay, so text to image creation. We come over here. I can type in a black dog. I'm gonna do a black dog today. A black dog in front of a modern white house in a city because it 
detects a uh, rural suburban city. And we're just gonna come over here and hit a photo and we're gonna hit create image. And it is going to do text to image. They don't have in yet a text to video feature, but text to video features definitely do exist. Uh, let's see. So this is the photo that was created from uh, text to image. Now, I want to let you know, this is not my preferred tool for text to image creation. So my preferred tool, and I'm going to copy this, a black dog in front of a modern white house in a city. Mm -hmm. And we're going to open up a tool called Mid Journey, but we're going to open that up via the Discord app. All right. So this is my son, Austin. I'm, we have a new company. I'm in the process of creating digital human avatars for him. So that's the picture of Austin. When I come over here, we're going to hit forward slash imagine. And I am going to paste in that prompt, a black dog in front of a modern white house in a city. We're going to hit that. And you're going to be able to see the, the substantial difference in using mid journey for your text to image. So even though I love Canva, I do not believe that their text to image is the best text to image. I think that there are substantially uh, better tools out here and mid journey would be my preferred tool to use for text to images right now. I don't know what it'll, you know, what it'll be at the end of the year, but it is 46% done already. And we are going to have four images that we can upgrade those images. But as you can see, things that used to take, you know, an hour or more, we're doing in one minute, 78% done. So we're almost there. Uh, the dog has way better, you know, looks way better already. Um, and this last 7% is going to really make it pop. Okay, so here is um, our dogs in front of a white house. I definitely like the top right hand side. I'm going to do upgrade that photo. One, because I want the photo by itself. Um, so I'm isolating that one picture. And here is our dog in front of a White House in Mid Journey versus a dog in front of a White House over on Canva. That's incredible. Yes, it is incredible. And here's the thing, right? I, I can talk about artificial intelligence probably for a straight week with absolutely no problems. But we're doing a three-hour class for your members where we're going to discuss 13 different tools for them to use in their business. I want them to think about their standard operating procedures, their business plans, if they're going to be a blogger, writing blog posts, video scripts, actually creating video without them being a part of the video. I kind of showed you an example with the Studio DID. All of their sales and marketing, all of their emails, we're going to show them how to create that content in their tone in record-breaking time. Because Chat GPT allows every single realtor the ability to have a productive, electrifying, trained assistant for free. However, if they want the best in class productive, electrifying, trained assistant, they can get one with just using Chat GPT and Canva. $30 a month. So what you would pay one an hour is what you can get for an entire month. Is there a cost for mid journey or is that a free tool right now? Uh, mid journey is no longer free. It was free when I started using it back in December. Mid journey when I signed up was $96 a year. I do believe it's $120 per year, but I love mid journey. And 
I have also become a AI publisher and author with the Five Minute CEO Journal for Growth and Success. The proceeds from this book go back to our diversity committee. I wrote it to honor the president, not the president, the CEO of the Chicago Association of Realtors and actually have a check <laughs> in my purse to deliver to my association because of the proceeds from the sale. So this is a prompt journal. Uh, everything in here, the quotes, the journal pages, the cover was created with artificial intelligence. So not only do I have 30 other publications that I did not use AI with, I now have an AI publication where the proceeds of the sale, because this is passive income, go back to the Chicago Association of Realtors. Awesome. What a way to give back. Yeah, got to you got to give back. Actually, I have two checks sitting around here. Huh? <laughs> one for the book, and then one I matched the funds of the National Association of Realtors for Frank Williams, who is my mentor to the Rainbow Push Coalition. So to whom much is given, much is expected. I hear that. <laughs> Do we have any questions over on Facebook? Right now, I don't see any questions, um, but if you guys have any questions out there? I'm sure you do, because this is an exciting new topic. Please put them in there, and I'll make sure Marky can see those. So what's something you've always wanted to do, you think you wanted to do or create, and you have no idea how to do it, leveraging AI and chat GPT? So um, here's the first question here. What Yay. is your advice to agents just starting or curious about AI? So I remember the first night that I came into my office to use ChatGPT. I went over to open AI and I was up an additional six hours. I, I think I left out of my office around 4.30 a.m. And I am the person who prides herself on getting seven and a half hours of sleep every single night. I'm very serious about my sleep. I just started <laughs> getting a regular night's sleep probably about three weeks ago. So with that being said, the first night of me just playing with it, I was just playing. And I was just praying, oh, I hope this tool is always free. Within two weeks, I changed my mind. I was like, I don't care what it costs. I'm paying to use this tool. The first thing that I recommend to agents is to go back to whatever initial training you have Everything, if you're a new agent, that you need to create as an agent that's a time-consuming process or a redundant task, you want to leverage artificial intelligence in order to create that. For me as a seasoned agent, I just start going through my to-do list. So if I was to look at my emails right now, I doubt if I have 20 emails in my inbox because I'm using it for generative AI to respond to messages. So what I want you to do, if you're new, think about whatever initial training you might've had with your association or with the company that you decided to align with. And it says to you, you need to reach out to 100 people. Well, I'm gonna leverage it to come up with a message. I'm actually gonna ask it as a new agent, oh, let's go do that. How would you use it? Huh? Let's, <laughs> we live and in real time, let's go on over here and check it out. Uh, we're going to come over to chat GPT. And I'm going to tell you why. I just got off the phone with my director of operations this morning. And we're doing a challenge in the month of August, an eight by eight strategy, strategically reaching out to eight people by 8 a.m. And we have to come up with 31 different ways to reach out to eight people by 8 a.m. And I said, if we don't go over and use chat GPT to help us do this, for those of you who are already using chat GPT, I will tell you my interface likely does not look like your interface because I have plugins, I have Chrome browser extensions that I'm using to make my chat GPT do additional things. So I, I have chat GPT on steroids. Like mm -hmm. this is the uh, uh, Rolls Royce version of chat GPT because I got a lot going on here. But we're going to come over to chat GPT. Can I ask you one question, Marky? Yeah. So what are you using that makes your um, user interface look so different? What's the what's that plugin? Is that the AIPRM premium plugin? 
Yeah, that's the AIPRM premium plug in. And what AIPRM public uh, does is, let's see if I can scroll down and get the number. Here it is. It provides me with 3,647 pre-written prompts. The way to make AI work effectively is through the ability to prompt. I am a prompt engineer. So I'm consistently training myself on other people's prompts, uh, writing those prompts. So let me give you an example. Let's say we wanted to, and I'm going to make sure that I come back and do the 30-day uh, startup for an agent. Uh, let's say that I wanted to come over here and we wanted to do a human written, 100% unique SEO optimized article. I'm going to click on, let's take this out of please. We're going to hit this and enter keywords. And the article is going to be how to get your first 10 closed real estate uh, transactions as a realtor. Okay, so we're going to hit this plus button and you see it breaking down. This, this is how fast it works. So that prompt is already in there, giving it all of these instructions. And I have access to 3,647 of them. Okay, so that's an additional expenditure of about $20 per month. When I started using these tools, I knew that I would, uh, I allocated a budget of up to $200 per month because I wanted to just dive in and change everything. And I am having record breaking months. Actually, this will be our most productive sales year ever because of AI, but it was my mindset and my commitment to understanding. Now let's come and look at this. We can tell that this is cut off. So what we then do is hit continue and it is going to continue writing, okay? And it just keeps going. Now to me, this is kind of giving us an outline. Once we believe that it is 100% is concluding, right, complete, what I could say is elaborate, because we see 7.2 here. Ah, elab, <laughs> hold on, elaborate on 7.2. We need to oh. spell for us too, especially me. Yeah, there we go. So now it's breaking down that 7.2 because I didn't think that it had given us enough information. Yeah. So as a new agent, I would say that you would leverage ChatGPT to provide you with instructions based on who you have identified as your target market. How do you come up with your target market? You want to take your MLS courses and dive deep into the numbers of your marketplace. What I tell agents, there are three things that I think about uh, if I was coming back into real estate today. I want to look at the rate of sale. I definitely want to take a look at the price point. And I want to understand the barriers to entry to whatever those areas are. And I want to pick a community with the fastest rate of sale at the highest price point with the fewest barriers to entry in order to secure success faster. Okay. But that's why it looks like this. Now, let me also give you a couple of things here as well. I do pay for it, right? So because I pay for it, I have. At the very top, I have ChatGPT4. I'm able to access Bing in real time. And I have my own plugins. Some of these plugins, and let me say this, these plugins are available to everyone. But some of the plugins would be Zillow, Redfin, Rentable Apartments. Those are not intended for realtors. Those are intended for the 1.6 billion consumers who are using the tool. So we had just talked about a brown dog. We're going to come over here. We're going to use the photorealistic plug in. I'm going to come over here. Did I paste that? Let me see. Paste. Let's see if it's going to, sometimes I have to run these more than one time. So it's not working correctly. So we're going to do it again. 
it says the plugin is enabled, but what I wanted to do is to write us a better prompt than a black dog in front of a modern house. Okay, so we're going to hit stop generating. We're going to uh, paste this again. It's doing its own thing. We'll wait for it. It's still not working the way that it's supposed to work. So the way it is supposed to work is when we come over here to a cold day in Chicago. I just refreshed. You see how it's giving me these wonderful prompts? Mm -hmm. That is how the photorealistic is supposed to work. So we're going to come back up again. We're going to hit a new chat. The plugins, they they definitely do not have the interface um, perfected. So the 3.5 to me definitely works a little better um, because the plugins, I know when they're working because what you'll see, yeah, it's still not working right. Um, what you'll see is on the, there's a little pop-up that comes up mm -hmm. that lets you know that it is working. So let me say this, it is not a perfect tool, but it is a good tool. And I'm gonna tell you what I might be doing wrong. One thing to think about are the fact that not only do I have plugins, I also have Chrome browser extensions. So I'm gonna come over here to this Chrome browser extension because one is enabled in the sidebar called Prompt Storm. I'm gonna turn that off. We're gonna refresh because when you have too many things going on, sometimes it just does not work correctly. Okay, so now we're gonna try because I removed that uh, extension up at the top right. I'm gonna try it one more time. And let me just check one thing. Let me make sure I only have one plug in checked. Okay, let's see if it'll work this time. And if not, we'll keep moving. Yeah, it's not, uh, that plug in is not working correctly, but you do have your plugins. And the way that that plug in should have worked is when we came back down here to a cold day, it should have given me, it should have said prompt and given me all of these details to create better photos over inside of Mid Journey. So when I did use that the other day, here are the pictures that it gave me of Chicago with a detailed prompt about a cold day in Chicago. Very cool. How would you use this to highlight um housing market data for, for your market? Um, the way that I would use this for highlighting market uh, data, come back, let me give you a couple of things. Sure. The first one is ChatGPT 3.5 is only trained up until 2021. So if I'm gonna use the free version, I'm gonna come back over to my extensions. And I am going to scroll down and I am going to enable web chat GPT because I need information that is relevant and current today, not only up until 2021. So we come back over to chat GPT, we hit refresh. And at the bottom, you see web access. I'm going to now turn this on and I can ask for uh, Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And let's see if Lawrence June has said anything about Nashville. Now you see how at the bottom is doing the checks, mm -hmm. the green. That means that it is searching the internet in real time to pull in an additional uh, data, data set to give us that information since it was only trained up until 2021. When we are leveraging information directly from the internet, it takes a little time to process. So in a minute or so, it will spit out uh, the information. Now that's for the free version. So <clears throat> web chat GPT, it's free. Uh, you can use it in your browser extension. I happen to be a Chrome girl. In order to pull in that new information, 
once this is done, when we go and we look at web chat, uh, when we look at chat GPT-4, it will allow us to pull the information in using Bing, but we have to make sure that we have Bing checked. And mm -hmm. it seems like it's paused right now. So I don't know if between me being live, uh, it's pausing, but let's see, uh, we're not gonna stop browsing. We're going to let it do its thing, but it's searching the internet. And guess what? I did this the other day as well. So I'm pretty sure I got some Lauren June housing predictions already. Yep, it uh, it shut down. It's not responsive. So we're going to exit the page, reload, and come back in. And because we're having uh, two issues, the system might be overloaded at this time. And it can still be overloaded even with the paid version. But we're going to try uh, one more time for, uh, let's see if it was still in this one, for Lawrence June uh, housing prediction. Let me copy this. We're going to uh, regenerate and see what happens. Yeah. And so this is using uh, chat GPT-4? Uh, yeah. We're still in the 3.5. Okay. So the web access mm -hmm. with the Chrome browser extension is for the 3.5. We'll that's try the, one more that's time. The free, that's the free way to access the internet. That's the, yes, that's the free way to do it. So I have the free way to do it and mm -hmm. the paid way to do it. And it's definitely getting caught up. So what I often do when it start, uh, starts acting crazy, I will come in and I will log out and then re-log back in. If not, based on the time it currently is, it's 10 o'clock, it can be a lot of people online using these tools. When this tool came out, yes, uh, it's not, we'll log out. When this tool came out, it is one of the fastest growing tool in the history of the internet. It got to 1 million users in five days. I want you to think about this. Five, so it came out November the 30th, 2022. It had 1 million users in five days. So what is that, the, December the 5th? Okay. Today, there are 1.6 billion users. No one would have ever predicted that growth. No one. And still only 14% of adult Americans are using it as a tool. So I'm going to come over here and log out and come back in and see if we get uh, better results. Hmm. And it took Facebook almost a year to get to a million users, 10 months. Yeah, so most definitely. It took Instagram 2.5 months. 2.5 months. Yes. Five wow. Okay, so we're going to try one more time and see if logging out and logging back in will help us. If not, then I'm going to say it's overwhelmed and it would be something that I would need to come back to uh, later today, if we don't get past that 56. Yeah, it's getting caught up at that 56. So it's starting it, but it's not ending it. And if it logs us back out this time, then we'll try it with the four to see if the four works. For sure. Yeah, because the four has fewer users while you're, and the three. While we're waiting, one of the other questions that came in asking me how I use uh, it pertaining to my market. And I'm going to, once I answer how I do it, I'm going to answer the same thing you do. One of the things I do to kind of keep up with how the market's doing and especially the economy is I have a, a preset prompt every day that I run and I have chat GPT go out to um, different websites like um, Nashville Business Journal or um, maybe, uh, you know, major news websites. And I ask it to give me a high level summary on the real estate market, on inflation, on the economy that would be appropriate for a CEO or maybe somebody that's wanting to buy or sell a home in the next year. And it so it summarizes the news for me every day on what's happening in the market. And it really allows you to keep up with what's going on, what the average interest rates are. And that's something, a question people ask all the time. What are interest rates today? And if you're not following the news, it's it's, it's pretty volatile out there. So. How do you how do you use it as an assistant like that to, to do research? So for the research, I'm definitely going to either do the web chat GPT or I am going to come back in and do the four version. For me, I have I don't do a daily report, 
but I do use the tool every single day for content creation. And for the things that I do, those redundant automated tasks, I have prompts and those prompts are stored inside of my prompt folder. And I also not only do I have prompts for things that I do consistently, I have multi-step prompts, uh, which I can write a course in a minute. Um, the, and once I write this course in a minute, I need to come back and check it for plagiarism. Mm-hmm. And inside of Grammarly, I have my plagiarism tool. I need to check it for AI content. There's a tool called originality.ai. And so even though it's creating all of this great content, I need to make sure that I'm adhering to license law, the realtor code of ethics and fair housing rules and regulations. So I am consistently having to go and check the content in which I am going to use, especially if it is public facing content. That's a good point. That yeah. Good point. And one if of the questions that came up too, that kind of circles around that is a copyright. Is something provided by Canva or, or AI generated content? Is it, who, ha- who owns the copyright to that? Uh, AI... So currently, the rules state that AI created content is not copyright infringement. We Are they talking about changing the rules? Most definitely. Mm-hmm. But what I recommend is that you take that photo and you go and do reverse photo lookup. You can do that in Google to see if that photo already exists. Okay. But if, if you write something in chat GPT, can you copyright that as your own writing? Hmm. Can well, with the paid version, you can use it as your own. So with ChatGPT, Midjourney, Canva, if you have the paid tool, mm-hmm. they have given you the written right to use it and monetize it. Okay. If you're using it for free, no. Can somebody copy your um, words or your image and use that without your permission? If it um, AI generated. I would say most definitely they can. And the reason is because there are tools like Quillbot that will paraphrase that. Okay. And here's the thing. When I ask for it to write in a tone, if I tell it my tone, it is going to automatically change. So you could have written a great article, mm-hmm. but our tones are different. Sure. If I give it my tone and how I write as the instructions to your content, it is going to change it so much that you you would read it and and you would know it had something to do with your article, but you would not be able to detect it as being your article. Okay. So one of the ways, the, the one of the reasons that I have very low AI detection and plagiarism scores is because I'm consistently telling it the tone in which I want it to write. Exactly. And that's and what so I- it's mm-hmm. going to change it. And I'm going to show you an example in one second of that. So we went in, I came back in, and I wanted to see if it was going to work. And I used the chat GPT-4 okay. with the Bing extension. Lauren June, the chief economist of the National Association, has made some predictions for the Nashville housing market in 2023. He has suggested that mortgage rates, which surpassed 7% in November, may no longer rise and could even decline uh, furthermore, he stated that the real estate housing market summit December peaked. Uh, while these predictions suggest a cooling market, it's important to note that home prices in the Nashville area are remaining strong. The most recent data showed an increase of 8% year over year in November. And you see these numbers, that's giving you the reference point, okay, back to wherever it got the information. But I wanted to come over here to talk about uh, tone, and I'm going to actually go into a presentation, the one that I did for the company on Tuesday. And for that company on Tuesday, let me make sure. Yep, this is it. Uh, Let's see. View. Nope, that's not it. Slideshow from current slide. So when we look at this from Tuesday, I said write a compassionate and persuasive direct email campaign to retired individuals who are looking to earn additional income and the promotional products industry will be an excellent second income generator. You can see it says, I hope this email finds you in good health, high spirits uh, as you enjoy a well-deserved retirement. I'm reaching out to you today to share an exciting opportunity that could help you earn additional income. 
while indulging in a fulfilling and flexible venture. I said re rewrite in a respectful tone. I hope this email finds you well. It didn't say good health. Enjoying the rewards of your retirement, cherishing the moments of relaxation and fulfillment. Same thing, rewritten in a different tone, and it changed it. Well, the organization that I work for, they often hire Barbara Corcoran. I said, rewrite in the tone of Barbara Corcoran, okay, the Corcoran group. I hope you're doing fabulous and enjoying the fruits of your hard-earned retirement. It's Barbara Corcoran here, and I couldn't help but notice that you're someone who's always looking for exciting opportunities to make some extra income. Same instructions with a changed tone. Mm -hmm. So if you know your tone, and if they come to class, we will teach them. I, I will teach you your tone. I promise you, I will teach you your tone. Then you get to do everything in your tone so it sounds like you wrote it, not the other person. But I'm still going to take that and bring it over to Grammarly. Let's go here. So inside of Grammarly, I can hit the plagiarism checker, okay? Uh, this might not be enough content, but this, oh, because I typed this right in here. Um, so it's not going to give me a plagiarism checker. But if I was to do copy and paste, it would give me a plagiarism checker. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. We are close to running out of time. Um, one last question is they want to know, can you show us how to enable the plugins in the chat GPT? Yes, because I don't teach theory. <laughs> I actively engage with these tools every single day. So one thing that I will say is different than uh, about me than a lot of instructors, I don't tell realtors to do something I don't do. Okay, so yes, once you have signed up and you're using, well, let me, oh, they said extensions, didn't they? Boop, boop, back up. Um, I plugins. thought you had. No, yeah. enable the plugins. Okay, to enable the plugins. Yep. Once you are using the ChatGPT Plus, when you come over to your name, so I'm over here on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. I'm going to click on settings. When we click on settings, you're going to go to beta features. And you have to make sure that you click on browse with Bing and plugins. They have to be green. So you have to enable them to appear at the top of your screen. And let me be clear, I think it's probably well over a thousand plugins right now. So when we come to plugins, the first thing that we're going to see are the plugins that I've enabled. I read articles. I try all sorts of different plugins. I will just do a call to action right now. I am the podcast host of Drive with NAR, the podcast of the National Association of Realtors. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. So I'm always doing podcast research because I'm also the podcast host and owner of Social Selling Made Simple. So the things that I do consistently, I have a few of the plugins here. So we're going to go to the plugin store mm -hmm. and they have the ones that are popular. But when we click on all and let's see, it'll come in. You're going to notice all of these pages at the bottom and there's eight per page. There's well over uh, a thousand plugins available for you right now inside of ChatGPT4. Okay. Well, you know, when I look at my plugins, I don't have quite that many. So they may roll out depending on the length of time you've been a paid user. Well, let me say this. I want you to come to the top because a lot of people just have popular. Okay. Or sometimes new, okay. right? It, it, the new ones, I would say, is probably the tab. Make sure you're clicking on the all tab. Got it. To see all of them. And I made that. Let me tell you why, because I had made that mistake. Now, uh, I want to just clarify. Plugins are totally different than your Chrome browser extensions. So you can come in and just do a Chrome uh, web browser extensions. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to come over to the Chrome web store and you can start searching for chat GPT and you can pick the Chrome browser extensions you want. And then to know where your Chrome browser extensions are, you will hit these three dots top right hand side. And let me be clear, 
all of the browsers have extensions. I just prefer to use Chrome. I come to extensions and I'm able to manage all of my extensions. So these are all of the different extensions. You'll see some of them are enabled, some of them are disabled, but things that I use to make my life easier, leveraging, searching on Google. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the extensions are kind of like a plugin for Chrome um, and the other plugins are straight into chat GPT. But since you're running chat GPT inside of Chrome, they kind of work with you both ways. They work with me. So the AI PRM is not a plug in. It is a separate company. So it is a Chrome browser extension. So when I open up my chat GPT, you see this whole AI PRM. Well, the way it's in here is through an extension, but this is a paid extension. Got it. Very so interesting. Now, when am I, when are we doing our event? Is it August the 1st? Um, it is in August. There's going to be, a, I don't know the exact date. Somebody maybe will. Oh, I'm uh, going to tell you. Know in the chat, but there will be a link to register in the face, in the comments of this Facebook uh, live stream. So check out that link, but tell us more about this class coming up in August, Marky, before we get out of here for the day. So I want everyone to register. The class is going to be August the 1st. 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. I definitely believe that we might have submitted it for continuing education. If not, we can do that because I am also a course provider in your great state. Right. We're going to do efficiency boost 13 ways to use AI and chat GPT in real estate. Keep in mind, today was not that class, okay? So we're going to sit down for three hours. You can get your questions answered the same way that you got them answered today. Not only do I want you to register, I want your assistant to register. If you are with a brokerage, your managing broker needs to come. Not only do I train realtors, I train ed directors, I train CEOs. I work for Fortune 500 companies teaching them right now about artificial intelligence, chat GPT, but I am a realtor. This is uh, my 20th year. It's my Jordan year as a member of the National Association of Realtors. And to even dive a little deeper, I do serve on the board of directors of the National Association of Realtors, the Real Estate Business Institute, the Chicago Association of Realtors, and I've accumulated 64 real estate related licenses, designations, and certifications. So I want Nashville to come on out to the event so that you too can leverage these tools because only 14% of adult Americans are using them. So we're just gonna make the assumption that 14% of or less of realtors are leveraging these tools effectively in their businesses. Awesome, very good. And the good news is it's already been approved for three hours of CE in the state of Tennessee. And Marky's right, you do not wanna miss this. This is a virtual event that, uh, everybody can attend. So do not miss this, sign up. I'll be there for sure. Um, one one last piece of advice for us, Marky, as we run out the door today, what what should we work on first? What do you, what's the first thing we should do if we want to get an AI? Mindset, Mindset and commit to becoming a active lifelong learner. We can, we no longer live in a world of what we did yesterday is good enough. We have to evolve and it comes down to mind set. I would encourage everyone to order the book, You to the Second Power, which is U Squared. I'm in the midst of having a quantum leap, but I read that book back in November because a friend of mine who was an appraiser now makes multiple seven-figure incomes. And he said I should read the book, so I read the book. And in order to have that quantum leap, we have to be active, lifelong learners. Thank you so much for that advice. That's excellent advice. And when I said we had a superstar in the house today, was I right? Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much, Marky. Thank you for, for being here today and sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. And we so much appreciate it. Take care and have an awesome day for all the folks out there. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.